Let's look at an example of one-way analysis of variance. Can self-control be restored during intoxication? An experiment investigated this by randomly assigning 11 males to each of four groups. Group A received 0.62 milligrams of alcohol per kilogram of body weight. For a little perspective, for a 100 kilogram male, this is approximately the alcoholic equivalent of four and a half beers. Group AC received the same amount of alcohol plus some caffeine. Group AR received the alcohol and a monetary reward for a performance on the task. Group P received a placebo. The drink was misted with alcohol to make it smell like alcohol, but it had negligible alcohol content. The participants drank their drinks, then completed a word stem completion task involving controlled memory processes. Higher scores in this test were indicative of greater self-control. Here are box plots for the scores of the four groups in the experiment. Visually, it appears that the scores in the alcohol group are a little bit lower than the scores in the other groups. Alcohol and caffeine tended to have scores a little bit higher, alcohol and reward a little bit higher still, and the placebo group about the same. But the question we're asking in one way ANOVA is, are those differences big enough that we can say there is significant evidence of a real effect, that there is significant difference between the groups? And here we're going to test the null hypothesis that the population means of the four groups are all equal, against the alternative hypothesis that the null hypothesis is false. Or in other words, the alternative hypothesis is that the population means are not all equal. Now because this is an experiment, the null hypothesis is sometimes written in terms of treatment effects. In other words, the null hypothesis might be written that the treatments have no effect. Here we have the box plots and the summary statistics. Visually, it appears as though there's differences between these groups. But what we want to do is test that statistically. Is there statistically significant evidence of a difference? The sample means for the four groups are listed down here. Also, the sample standard deviations. The standard deviations are important for us because one-way analysis of variance assumes that the population variances of the different groups are equal. If we look at the numbers down here, we see that the sample standard deviations are different, as they're going to be, but they're pretty darn close. And visually, certainly looks like the variability within each group is pretty darn similar. Not much going on there. So there's nothing to say that that assumption of equal population variances is violated here. There is one value here that's a bit of an outlier, but it's not too extreme and it's unlikely to have a massive influence on the results. If we put our data into a computer and got our ANOVA table, it would look something like this. The calculations are possible to do by hand, but it's quite a bit of a hassle, so it's best to use a computer. In the bitter end, we get an F test statistic. This is the F statistic that's testing the null hypothesis that the population means are equal. The p-value given here is the area to the right of this observed test statistic under an F distribution with three degrees of freedom in the numerator and 40 degrees of freedom in the denominator. This p-value is a very, very small value. And so there is very strong evidence against the null hypothesis. What does that mean in the context of this experiment? That small of a p-value says that there is very strong evidence that the groups do not all have the same population mean. Another way of phrasing this is that there is very strong evidence that the different treatments do not all have the same effect. In other words, that the alcohol and the alcohol and caffeine and the alcohol and reward and the placebo do not all result in the same word stem completion score on average. What do we do now? Well, when we don't have strong evidence against the null hypothesis, we're pretty much done. We simply state that conclusion. We do not have strong evidence of a difference in population means, and that is that. When we do have strong evidence against the null hypothesis, we want to investigate that further. This was our null hypothesis in this case, that the four groups all had the same population mean, and we had very strong evidence against this, very strong evidence that the null hypothesis is not true. But that could mean a variety of different things. Perhaps mu4 is different from the rest, but mu1, mu2, and mu3 are all equal. Perhaps mu1 is different from the rest of them. All sorts of different combinations that we can look at there. So we typically want to investigate that further to pin down where those differences lie. 
There is a variety of things that we can do at this point, but one option is to calculate confidence intervals for all the pairwise differences. So a confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2, a confidence interval for mu1 minus mu3, etc., etc. A confidence interval for all those different pairwise differences. And there are some different ways of going about that, and I'll look at that in another video.